Hi students, welcome back. So in our previous class, we have uh, understood the mechanical transportation system and elevators in detail. So we have also understood uh, uh, different classifications of an elevator and under every classification we have also further understood the subclassifications uh, and how they are correct so now proceeding further we have design considerations for an elevator so we need to understand that also meaning how you need to be designing or rather what factors go behind designing an elevator all right so fundamentally we have three uh, components as design considerations so one is the population uh, to which you are designing the lift surface and quantity of service that is the handling capacity or the maximum flow rate of the people and then we have the quality of service that is interval or the flow waiting time okay so let's understand these three in detail so population who required the lift service okay so population is calculated based on occupancy type or the building typology for example uh, for we have residential commercial primary educational institutional etc you know various building typologies right so uh, for that uh, the second column over here what you see this is the occupancy area per person which shall mean that in case if you have a residential setup okay the unit for this is in square meter i'm repeating it the unit for this occupancy area per person is square meter all right okay so uh, in residential uh, purposes uh, 12.5 square meter per person shall be considered is that clear yes so this shall mean that 12.5 square meter per person shall be considered for a residential setup so whatever is the total area of yours you can just divide it by this and you can definitely design get to know that for these many number of people is something you need to be catering to design your elevator okay all right yes so next is the quantity of service so in this we just understood about you know there's something called as handling capacity okay so what is this handling capacity factor it is expressed as the percentage of the building population the group of lifts can cope up with over a given time period okay usually it is given uh, in for five minutes so it is also calculated with the help of a formula so h is the handling capacity is equal to 300 into q into 100 divided by t into p okay is this clear so q over here shall be the average number of passengers carried in a car so this is also depending on the car dimension and also at that peak period what is the total population that needs to be handled is what is called as p and t is the waiting interval so by giving values to this you will understand the handling capacity for any elevator okay so next we have the quality of service this is pretty easy meaning you know uh, generally it is the waiting time uh, for for various floors so acceptable interval shall be uh, as written here 20 to 25 seconds is pretty excellent 30 to 35 seconds is good and 35 to 40 seconds is fair enough all right is this clear yes so next we will be learning about the speed 
so it is independent upon the so it is dependent upon the quantity of service required and the quality of service desired okay so the speed of lifts i shall repeat it is dependent upon the quantity of service required and the quality of service desired okay therefore uh, because it's a bit subjective factor coming into place there is no set formula in order to establish the speed for any elevator so however based on uh, certain experiences and based on certain experiments trials and recommendations there is certain set norms so you have number of floors in this column and you have the speed factor okay so in case if it is 4 to 5 floors then 0.5 to 0.75 meters per second is pretty good and if it is 3 to 20 floors then 1 and a half meter per second to 2 and a half meters per second should be fair enough okay so this is something that one has to generally keep in mind while designing the speed for any elevator and other parameters okay so next we have safety considerations safety is something that has to be prioritized for any mechanical equipment otherwise there are disastrous situations where you a person can end up you know uh, a person can end up like you know uh, what do you say uh, sacrificing his life for no reason okay and that is the reason so because it has been used by so many people and uh, it is a mechanical device so you need to have the safety considerations for sure so it is necessary that all elevators should have a fully equipped safety system in place all right so what all goes in this uh, safety considerations or you know what are the various types of safety systems we have electromagnetic brakes okay then we have speed governing devices or speed monitoring device that will uh, govern the speed of the elevator car in case if it is going exceeding or too less then th they will put it back to track okay then we have shock absorber system we have intercom facility in case you are jammed or stuck you can talk to an outsider then we have an overloading sensor because a lift is again designed for some specific weight so if it uh, overloads or if the weight exceeds then the lift itself will indicate saying that you know this is overloaded all right yeah next we have door restraints uh, for example these are sensors that are put near the door so that uh, you don't have any problems and you know suddenly the door shutter does not close when a passenger is entering the lift car clear yeah so next we have uh, balusters so these balusters are something that will help a person uh, a person in case if he's servicing or something of that sort it will definitely help him for his safety reasons then we have pit buffers so pit buffers we spoke some time back so these are small buffers that are placed in the lift pit so that when the car comes and rests on the lowermost floor it doesn't suddenly end abruptly so that they will come and sit onto a some sort of a cushioning or a pads that are placed below that we call it as buffers so in a hydraulic system we have the lift car coming and sitting on the buffer if it is a traction system then we have uh, uh, the lift car as well as the counterweights where they come and sit on the buffers at the lift pit area okay then we have emergency alarm systems so uh, in case of uh, emergency or if the thing is stuck or lift car is stuck in the shaft 
so you can you can have those uh, switches inside the lift car that will alarm the people outside area okay then you might you will also have a telephone kept for communication purpose and there'll always be one emergency light in the lift shaft which has to be always lit okay and emergency power definitely has to be there in case of power cuts the passenger has to come to his respective floor or any safe floor so what happens uh, the lift car has to come back to some safety landing after which the passenger can come out okay then we have fire agency emergency systems so in case of a fire or anything you will have buttons that will uh, signify the fire emergency and so and again the lift door opens to the safe landing area so that the passengers can get evacuated rather than getting stuck inside the shaft then we have trap doors so in case if the doors are jammed and you know you are unable to open anything and there's no power inside and things goes beyond your control things like that then there is also an emergency trap door on the top surface of the lift car so in the ceiling of the lift car rather so does the safety people or the firemen can definitely get into the lift shaft and they will get on to the top of the lift car and make sure they can evacuate you from the lift car okay so that is the time where the strap doors will be helpful so these are the safety considerations and the one of the most important component shall be the automatic rescue device so the picture over here you would have seen the i mean uh, if in case you happen to go to any lift machine room you will definitely see get to see a machine of this sort this is nothing but an automatic rescue device okay so when it is used when you know when uh, when the lift is stuck between the floors because of any jam or because of any power cut or whatever other reasons this automatic rescue device will help the passenger in such a way that the lift car is taken to the nearest landing level and the doors shall open out to that landing level and that time the trapped passengers can definitely come out okay so during this time what happens uh, from during emergency or when the car is stuck or jammed so the time taken the speed of the lift car taken to come down during the power failure will be considerably uh, lower than your normal speed so it is meant to come down slowly and then open out to a safer landing rather than coming down in the usual speed okay is it clear to all of you shall we proceed there is one small component next what we need to be understanding is information that needs to be provided by an architect or a engineer for the installation of the lift inside any building okay so the drawings of the building should have this following particulars is what is noted one is the numbers total number of lifts and the type of lifts whether you need it for domestic purpose whether you need it for passenger lift do you need it for goods lift whatever is the purpose and also its sizing accordingly and where the lift well or the lift shaft has to be located okay so next uh, particulars of the lift well enclosure okay so what uh, how what is the material of your lift shaft what is the thickness of that material what is the surface finish that you are trying to give to the material uh, lift shaft or the lift well is it fire rated or no is there all possible services given to that whatever is essential or no all those details goes into this lift well enclosure okay next we have the sizing position and number and type of landing doors 
so do you want the door to both the shutters of the door to open to one side do you want uh, either shutter to open on either side of the lift car what how what is the type formation of door opening is something one has to specify and to how many number of loads one of the most crucial component to how many floors should this particular elevator serve in a building okay and also the headroom or the floor height is also very important because the speed has to be governed accordingly correct yeah then the number of entrances uh, do you have entrance at every floor or do you have it at an alternate floor i don't know it depends on the design again what is the total headroom height of the lift shaft if you're providing a machine room uh, where is the access or given to the machine room how is the natural lighting and ventilation given to the machine room this detail has to be provided should be followed as per nbc okay and uh, what is the height of the machine room and within the machine room where is the location of the lift machine and all this controlling devices you can't place it randomly if, because this is a mechanical system one has to be very very careful while placing all or any equipment associated to this particular elevator okay otherwise it will be a very bad situation so there are technical engineers who are very much aware of the technical information about how it works so they will be responsible in educating a lot of such parameters then we have lift pit so what should be the depth of the lift pit where you should place the buffer and you know what should be the provision for the lift pit if it is more than one and a half meter then what sort of mechanism you should give in so that the service person can get down into the lift pit to service anything okay so what is the treatment given inside the lift pit and uh, is do you have a drain hole so that in case of any uh, water leakages the water should be drained out immediately so all these things has to be uh, given and uh, is it structurally stable if your lift shaft is structurally stable what type of uh, you know metal reinforcements you need to be giving to the lift shaft so that the load is either transferred to the ground or either it's transferred to the other building elements and size of any foot size and position of any footings adjacent to the lift shaft in case if anything is close by then the size and position of the supporting steel walls at the roof levels is something one has to definitely provide okay clear yes